Welcome back to my channel. This is Dave Lucas with Injection Molding Skills and More. Sorry I haven't been with you guys in a couple weeks. Um, I had the flu for five days, six days. So I was at, out of work for almost a whole week with the flu. Um, I'm back to work. Thank God I'm feeling a lot better. Um, today's video I wanted to go over weld lines or knit lines or melt lines is what they call them. There's three different ways they call them. Um, <clears throat> this is where two plastic materials go around a boss or a, an object as it's flowing into the tool and they meet together. So I'll show you a picture actually what I'm talking about right here. So what happens is this is the gate down here. What happens is the material flows in, it goes around this boss and it creates a knit line or a weld line or a melt line is what they call it. And then what happens is, is that continues down and goes across another one. What happens is sometimes you'll get to another area on a part and it'll make a weak area. So that area could be actually really brittle. So what you want to do is you actually, if you're looking at it like this, these are, I was going to use the whiteboard, but I was changing my mind. So the material is flowing in from right here and it comes in, it goes around this boss. Well, then you got these two flow fronts right here where the material is actually flowing into this right here. And what happens is it creates a knit line right in the very center of that part. If you see the pictures of how the flow is going down through there, you can actually see how the material is going down through there. So what happens is, is it creates a knit line, a weld line, a melt line. Um, this is in the tool design. It's sometimes you can't get away from it. It's always going to be there. You can hide it a little bit. You can make it more faint looking, but you never get rid of them completely. Um, what happens is, is like on this picture here, I'm going to take the top part of this off. What happens is, is you'll have like <clears throat> the gate here and you can see where the material is flowing around it. It'll create that line on the back side of that. So what happens is, is that'll be your weakest area. But what you can do is you can actually process around it and you can actually take like your mold temperature. You can, you know, you can lower your mold temperature or you can t take and have the, the temperature. It's not uniformed, you know, um, mold fill is either too fast or too slow, um, excessive, um, you know, like, let's see here. I got a couple things I wrote down, you know, the mold might be dirty. The fill speed might be too fast or too slow. It just depends. I mean, you got to change it and see if you can get the knit line to move to one side or to the other. Um, I'll show you guys a little video real quick, like a little simulation that shows you the material flowing into the mold. And then see what you guys think, okay? Check it out. Problem develops. When plastic flows, it forms a smooth, continuous flow front. If the plastic meets an obstruction, such as a pin, the flow front must split into two flow fronts to go around the pin. When the two flow fronts meet on the other side, the plastic rejoins. This leaves a slight depression at the surface, which we call a weld line. As flow continues, the two flow fronts may gradually reform to make one continuous, uninterrupted flow front. If this happens, the weld line disappears. This could be, this could be one area of how you see the flow coming in and it goes around this boss. Then it creates a knit line on the other side of this, which creates all the way down. And you'll see that knit line right there. The farther out you go, the better the knit line is going to be. Okay, now you see how that, whoops, I'm sorry, my camera's messed up. Okay, so you see how that, um, whoop, hang on a minute. All right, welcome back. So on that, you can see that um, the flow front, how it was flowing in there, going around that boss, creating a knit line on the other side. And then as it flew down the, the length of the part, then it filled out the rest of the way. Sometimes what you can do is you can go in real fast, go around that real quick. Sometimes you'll create a gas burn though, because the water will, will try to fill back into that area. So what you want to try to do is try to either fill it slow and see where it moves it to, and then start filling a little bit faster, a little bit faster, and see if you can actually move that line anywhere else and make it more faint or to where you can't really see it. So like I said, I have, I wrote down a couple of things on here, like faster speed as far as filling it and packing it, either you try going slower or, or up, or up. Um, you know, venting, um, you know, mold temperature, 
one side hotter than the other side or make it hotter your your melt temperature either make it hotter or lower um um there's there's tons of different other things too that you could try um um i wrote down like uh, let's see for weld lines i put down raise mold temperature and take plastic temperature increase injection speed or lower injection speed lower melt temps and then switch to a, a less viscosis material viscous material um you can try all those different things and see if it helps you but you'll never get rid of the knit line completely you what you'll do is you'll just hide it more or less so best thing i can say is if you have a part that you have a very high a surface like class a surface is very visible like an automotive so what you want to do is try to make it to where you can hide it to where you can barely see it but it'll show up on the underneath area of the part so what you're doing is you're just basically forcing it down and covering it up more or less but it's always going to be there um like i said knit lines weld lines melt lines are they're hard to get rid of like i said you got a, a part like on this part here let's see your gates on this side so if you go all the way around you can see the knit line right there it's only got one gate that comes in from the bottom it fills all the way across up to the top but you can't get rid of that that'll be your weak area right there is this area here if you, if it if it was to break it would want to break right there in that area so the best way to, to do that is to actually change your speeds change your heat stuff like that and try to move it to a different area that's not going to be so weak on you and then see how that does so what you want to try to do is make sure you have that weld line or knit line close to an area that's not going to be like where you put screws and stuff like that into and try to move it around that because most of the time what happens is you'll have a boss where that goes around and what will happen is it'll go around that boss and then fill and then that's where they actually put the screws and stuff like that in to hold the part into the car or into the you know wherever they're using that part for they'll put it in that area so like i said i repeat this over and over all the time though you can never get rid of the weld lines, knit lines. I don't, I've been molding for a long time. You can hide them, but they're always still going to be there. There's there's really no way of getting rid of them completely. So I hope this video helps you guys out with weld lines, knit lines, or melt lines. Um, sorry I haven't given you guys a video in a while, but I hope I'll be able to get a video out every week over a new subject. Um, please like, share, and subscribe. And I appreciate all the following I'm getting. I really appreciate it. Till next time.